In this video, we want to look at how to fit a new chain or how to correctly tension a saw chain. Uh, in this case, we'll be fitting a new guide bar as well. Of course, you have to have the correct guide bar and saw chain for the saw you're working on. That information can often be found on the actual guide bar itself. So if you're working with an existing guide bar, um, it helps to replace like for like and uh, you can get some helpful information there or you can consult with your local dealer to make sure you get the correct size uh, saw chain or guide bar. It's really important as well that we consider the drive sprocket. This is what uh, transmits the engine power into the saw chain. Uh, the general rule is that every two to three loops of saw chain you would fit a new drive sprocket. In this case, we have a good sprocket. You can see that I'm wearing gloves. It's always a good idea when handling saw chain, especially new saw chain, because it can be very char uh, sharp and easy to cut yourself. The next thing that's really important to get right is uh, the chain around the right way. You can fit a chain on backwards, and of course the chain on backwards cannot cut. Just to help perhaps make it a little bit easier to see, I have a larger model of a saw chain here. Um, and each, every individual tooth has a sharp edge of course, and that needs to be pointing away from the chainsaw when you're looking down. So that would be the correct way of having the chain uh, on uh, and not that way around. So that there is the correct way. I then correctly fit it over the drive sprocket end. I can lay the drive links of the chain down into the groove of the guide bar until the chain is sitting in. There is a chain adjuster peg that we have to mesh in with. Sometimes it might require that you back off the chain adjuster peg a little bit so that that all fits into place. So you can kind of see that just in there, um, the chain adjuster peg is just coming out through and the hole and the bar is sitting down properly. Um, once the bar and everything is in place, then we can take our side cover. And then I just tighten up the bar nuts so they're about half a turn loose. Um, uh, loose enough so that there is still a little bit of uh, up and down movement in the guide bar. That means when I take my bar spanner, place it into where the chain adjuster peg is, when I tighten up on it, you can see the chain is coming up. The other thing that you'll notice as well is that when I lift up on the guide bar, a little bit of that slack appears. If I drop the guide bar back down, that slack is taken up. It's really important that when you tension the chain, you hold up on the guide bar because most of your cutting is on the underside there. Generally, the guide bar will work its way up over time, even if you have got those bar nuts uh, done up tight. Uh, and of course, that means your chain can come slack on you when you start to work with it. So. To prevent that happening, we always hold up on the guide bar while we're doing our initial tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tension, and this is the, the sort of rule that I like to teach. Um, I'm going to tension the chain so that that slack uh, here is just taken up. Alright, now that uh, chain is just touching. Now if the bar spanner was the minute hand of a clock, I'm going to turn that a further five minutes tighter. Call that the five minute rule. Now I can nip up those bar nuts. And we just turn the chain over. It turns nice and freely. Um, be very careful not to grab it uh, by hand, especially not to drag it back that way because if you slip it can be pretty nasty. Uh, and the main thing is that the chain is sitting snug, it's not hanging down all loose, 
but yet it's not so tight that it can't turn freely. Uh, that way we know we've got the chain correctly tensioned.